whoever put this rope here, hopefully they tied it good. Hey everyone, welcome back to Maxim Outdoors. And today we're diving right into part three of our Pennsylvania Wild series. Now, if you've been with us for the first two episodes, you know that we've been uncovering some of the most incredible and hidden gems within this region. And let me tell you, today's adventure is no exception. In this episode, we are headed deep into the heart of Sproul State Forest, a sprawling expanse of over 300,000 acres of untamed nature in one of the largest state forests in all of Pennsylvania. Established back in the early 20th century, Sproul was named after William C. Sproul, a former governor of Pennsylvania who was instrumental in promoting conservation efforts. This forest is a testament to those efforts, providing a home to a diverse range of wildlife and some of the most rugged landscapes you can imagine. So today, we are after something very special, something that very few have seen in person and one of the most difficult falls to get to within the Commonwealth, none other than Round Island Falls. This hidden waterfall is tucked away in the middle of nowhere, requiring a long, tough drive over rough terrain. Trust me folks, if you're thinking of visiting, a high clearance vehicle is a must. The journey to get here is an adventure in itself. The road here is not for the faint of heart, but that's all part of the allure. Out here in the PA wilds, it's about escaping the everyday and finding yourself in places untouched and unknown. With each bump and bend in the road, you feel the anticipation build for what lies ahead. And that's why I love the PA wilds. It's more than just a region, it's an experience. It's a place where the wilderness reigns supreme, where the forests are thick, the streams run wild, and every trail leads you to something new and breathtaking. This series has been all about capturing the essence of this wild and untamed land, and today, we're pushing even deeper. Round Island Falls is a perfect example of the hidden wonders of the Pennsylvania wilds. It's a reminder that there's always more to explore, more to discover, and more to appreciate in this beautiful corner of the world. So, if you're ready for another epic adventure with Maxim Outdoors, join me as we continue to explore the depths of the PA Wilds, uncovering its secrets, one trail at a time. So, enough talking, let's get to hiking. Alrighty, folks. Well, welcome back to an all-new episode of Maxim Outdoors. I'm still here at Patterson State Park here up in the PA Wilds, Potter County. Another day with 0% chance of rain, and guess what it did? Yeah, we just looked at the radar. It doesn't even say it should be raining right now. It pretty much rained all night on me. But uh, as you can see, yesterday was 4th of July, and I had this entire campground to myself. Not another soul camping here. Can you believe that? That just goes to show you, you could probably come up here any time of the year and have this entire place to yourself, considering it was empty for the 4th. So yeah, I'm gonna wait the, the rain out a little bit. I'm gonna pack up uh, what I got left in the tent, and then we are going to get rolling on down the road. We're gonna head on down south. Within the PA Wilds area, area we are gonna stop at uh, another state park I've never been to, none other than Kettle Creek. And everybody that I talk to, it seems to be one of the best state parks in Pennsylvania. It's very comparable to Cinema Honing, which is uh, easily in one of my top 10 state parks. So yeah, we got Kettle Creek for two nights. I don't know what we're gonna do hike-wise today. I might get there and just hang out and explore the, the creek side down there, but we'll see. So fingers crossed, maybe we'll uh, run into to some elk on this trip, but yeah. Nice moody morning here up in Potter County. So I'm gonna get packed up, gonna hit, hit the road, and I will see ya 
down at State Park number 37 for the channel, Kettle Creek. See you in a little bit. All right, folks, just arrived here at Kettle Creek and wow, the drive from Patterson down here was just insane. Viewpoint after viewpoint, just these giant foggy mountains everywhere you look. This is my first time getting out of the truck and I have to say this, just from this first look, this might be one of the best state parks in Pennsylvania. Like now I see what all the hype is about. Look at these giant mountains with the fog rolling on by. Holy smokes. <laughs> So yeah, this is state park number 37 for the channel. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that this is gonna be one of the top 10 state parks for me. This is just, wow. I wish you guys could have seen the drive coming in, but uh, my camera kept fogging up. It's, uh, it was like 71 whenever I left and it's just super humid out right now. So every time I would try to film a little bit outside, the camera will just fog up. But yeah, uh, I'm rambling now. So I got here a little bit early. Uh, Check-in is at three. So all that rain we got last night, I think I'm gonna take a little drive up into uh, Sproul State Forest or Sproul State Forest. And there is a waterfall up there known as Round Island Run Falls. Uh, Ryan from Mountains and the Memories did a video up there. Give him a check out on his channel. But uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna go up there and uh, hopefully we get some good flow. And then come back and uh, hang out at camp for the rest of the night. So yeah, let's go uh, waterfall chasing. What do you say? Seriously make an entire video about just driving through Kettle Creek. It is just that beautiful. Uh, I'm following right along Kettle Creek right now. A bunch of fly fishermen out passing the lower campground here. Uh, like I said, we got about an hour drive until we arrive at Round Island Falls. And supposedly it is a pretty rugged drive, a lot of back roads. So uh, yeah, hopefully it's not too bad because if it gets too bad, I'll turn around and you probably won't even see this. But uh, yeah, we got uh, an hour and eight minute drive to Round Island Falls, so I'll see you then. Yeah, as you can see, this is a pretty rough road. Uh, probably wouldn't chance it in a car. If you got a higher clearance SUV or a truck, you should be able to make it. I'm not even there yet. I still, it says I got 40, 45 minutes on the road. So. Hopefully, it, uh, hopefully it smooths out a little bit more as we get to the top here. After climbing up the side of the mountain, that was pretty sketchy, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, but we have made it to a, I guess, better, <laughs> better dirt road, I guess we'll call it. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think there's gonna be any turning back now. I'm hoping uh, once we get to the trailhead, maybe the road going down on the opposite side will be a little easier and we'll go down that way. But yeah. I don't know if I'd recommend coming up here. It is, uh, it's in the middle of nowhere and it is rough, so. My anxiety is pretty much through the roof after that drive. Uh, probably wouldn't recommend it. I'm hoping there's an easier way of going back down this way, but uh, I did stop here real quick. It says we got 20 minutes left on this road. Haven't seen another soul all, uh, all morning on this road. Sounds like there might be a gas well or something down here. But anyway, I uh, just passed this Nelsonville Cemetery established back in 1820. I remember seeing this in Ryan's video as well. I uh, figured we'd just poke around here for a couple minutes and see what we can see. Yeah, 
Yeah, it looks like the most recent burial here was in 1992, Charles Wadsworth. He was a Korean veteran. Well, these are uh, pretty old, including that old cross over there. Yeah, I mean, this is literally in the middle of nowhere. This is by far probably the most remote drive I've ever had to a hike in my entire life. Yeah, just wanted to show you some of these gravestones. And from what I remember back in the day, back in like the 1800s, 1700s, back before they would use grave markers, they would plant trees. So this big tree right here might actually be a grave marker. That's an old guy right there. But yeah, I'm going to jump back in the truck. And uh, like I said, I got about 20 minutes left to get to the trailhead. Honestly, I'm just kind of making this up as I go. Hopefully it all goes well and uh, we find an awesome waterfall today. So let's get it. Alrighty, well we survived the great climb up the mountain. I will say this, the further and further you get up here, it seems like the better the roads get. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I can find a better route going down. But uh, if not, We'll survive. And it looks like I wasn't the only one to make the trek up here today. Um, I gotta pull out the map and see exactly how long this trail is. I think it's only about a mile and a half. And uh, yeah, we'll be taking you down to a uh, 20 foot waterfall. So I'm gonna throw on the, uh, the bag and throw on the boots and let's get going. All right, well, first glimpse of the trail. A little weedy, but nothing too crazy compared to uh, yesterday's adventure. So as I said earlier, we are here in Sproul State Forest or Sproul State Forest. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. I believe this is my first hike ever in the State Forest, so pretty cool. Um, no cell service, so I'm gonna go ahead and guess that I think this trail is about a mile and a half. I'm not sure if it's an out and back or a loop, most likely an out and back. So uh, I really don't hear any rushing water in the distance but uh yeah great day to be out it's july it's in the 70s right now looks like uh, i might get a little drizzle but yeah enjoying life let's go Well, if this is any indication on how the waterfall is going to be, I'm not feeling too optimistic right now. The creek is pretty much a trickle right now, as you can see. So, uh, yeah. So this is the third day of my PA Wilds expedition here and does it get any wilder than this? Driving 40 minutes up a mountain, a dirt road, leading us to a waterfall in the middle of a state forest. Like, I couldn't really think of anything more wild than this to do. Apparently there are a ton of elk in this area. Gonna keep my eyes out for them today. And then after all this, we're gonna head on back to Kettle Creek camp right along the lake there and just uh, chill out the rest of the night so yeah the PA Wilds if you're unfamiliar with them be sure to uh, check them out one of these days because yeah <laughs> you get views like this views that you won't get anywhere else in the state This trail is just something else. Hemlocks, ferns, mossy boulders. We're following along. I'm not sure if this is Round Table Creek or not, but uh, just a slow descent on down the hill, surrounded by some awesome landscapes here.
Yeah, if I had to describe this trail in one word, it would be magical. Uh, cascade after cascade as we descend on into this holler here. Tons of hemlock trees. It's just a very, very awesome spot. I can't imagine coming up here in the fall time or the spring when this is just full of fog and yeah, that would be cool to see. But it's July and it's still uh, pretty remarkable here. Just when I got done telling you guys how magical this place was, all the hemlock trees, cascades, the smells, I run into this. I was really hoping I was gonna see some of these today. These are rhododendron, but they're in bloom. And it looks like they just bloomed pretty recently. So that's awesome. We are descending pretty far into this hollow though. Um, I would say we went down a couple hundred feet, but yeah. Check out these rhododendrons in bloom. All right, well, I just ran into the Tacoma owners finally, and they informed me that the waterfall is just about 200 feet down from where I am right now. They said, I guess there's a, a rope that you can climb down and see it a little better. And they gave me the best news of the day. There is actually an easier way to get uh, in and out of this trailhead driving wise. So I'm gonna follow their directions. They said, uh, look for the Kuhana Highway. It might add a couple minutes extra to the drive, but I'd rather do that than tear up my truck. So. Yeah, I think I can hear the waterfall up ahead, so uh, let's go. Well, after hiking through a blooming rhododendron tunnel here, we have arrived, I believe, at the waterfall. As the gentleman said, here is the black rope, and it looks like we are gonna head on down there and pretty much be at the base of the falls. So uh, let's go. Whoever put this rope here, hopefully they tied it good. All right, well, we survived the rope and just behind me here, you can see Round Island Falls off in the distance. So I haven't uh, walked over there yet. I'll take you over with me and we'll see it for the first time together. Wow, that is cool. Definitely a unique looking waterfall. Look how just perfectly smooth that is up front. I think this is about 20 foot tall. So yeah, I'm gonna hang out down here for a little bit, eat a little lunch. I don't think I could pick a better day to come here with all these red dendron in bloom. It's pretty spectacular. So yeah, Round Island Falls, check it out. One last look at Round Island Falls before we wrap this video up and head on back down to Kettle Creek. So uh, thanks for coming out as always. If you wanna check out this waterfall, I will leave a link to uh, the website that I found directions to check this out. Also check out Ryan's video. He's the one that uh, 
kind of pointed me to, to go here. So big shout out to Ryan from Mountains in the Memories. Um, one other thing, if you want to see this waterfall with maybe a little better flow, if you're a waterfall noob, obviously the best time to come out and see these are in the spring after the snow melt. Right now, I mean, it's not too bad. I thought maybe it would be a trickle, but there's definitely some volume there. But I guarantee if I was here in the spring, I wouldn't even be able to stand here. This is probably all underwater. But yeah, that's gonna wrap things up. I'm gonna hit the uh, sketchy road once again and hopefully make it to Kettle Creek in one piece. If you aren't subscribed already, make sure you hit that button because we're gonna be tackling Kettle Creek State Park next week. And uh, yeah, leave me a comment. Tell me if you've ever been here and leave me a like. And uh, thank you to all the Patreon supporters out there. Alrighty guys, I will see you next week from beautiful Kettle Creek.